Hello everyone, thank you for checking out this video. You are with Coach Jordan from Territory Academy. Right now, we are going to be solving this question together. For this lesson, we will be trying to make x a subject or formula, given that the question specifies that we are trying to solve this equation in terms of x, where m and n are given to be either parameters or constants. So before we dive right in, let us first observe what conditions are given. The question tells us that m times n cannot be equal to zero. All right? So we can break this down to two possible cases. That tells us m cannot be zero, that tells us that n cannot be zero as well. All right? So now that we've gotten both of these out of the way, let's take a look at the equation itself. All right? Now, for this equation, since m and n are both unable to be zero, it will be possible to just multiply the entire equation by m times n throughout. All right? And that will give us this equation over here. All right, since we have brackets involving x, let us expand those. And this is what we should have. All right, so first things first, let's try to eliminate any unnecessary constants. So we notice that m squared is present on both sides, so therefore they will cancel each other out. All right, and let us try to group the x terms together. And we're gonna shift negative n squared to the other side to give positive n squared. Since we're trying to find a solution for x in terms of n and m, we're going to try and factorize this expression here to this form, all right, such that we can make x the subject of the formula for this equation. At this point, we can divide both sides by n minus m such that we can isolate x, all right? However, for this step, it is imperative that we state a certain condition, being this denominator cannot be zero. Otherwise, this equation wouldn't make sense, right? There wouldn't be a definite solution for x. Hence, you have to specify that n minus m cannot be zero, which means to say that n cannot be equal to m. All right? So therefore, if n is not equal to m, then this is your solution for x, all right? But it is necessary that you also state the opposite, which means that if n does happen to equals to m, then there will be no solution for x, all right? So hence, for questions like this involving the solution for x, you have to consider all possible scenarios and uh, you have to include a discussion on the possible parameters for these two constants over here. All right, keeping in mind that we're trying to make x the subject of the formula. Okay? We have completed this lesson. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. Goodbye and see you again in another lesson. If you would like to learn more from these tutorials, please smash that like and subscribe button. Thank you.